Just about every time that I hit the trails and I show an interior shot of my Jeep, I'm guaranteed to get asked a lot of questions about what navigation system am I using, what hardware am I using, and how is this all mounted? And I thought today would be a great opportunity to just sit down, take a minute, and let's just discuss what I'm using, why I like using this, and why I have kind of keep coming back to this, because I have tried a few other things over the years. And I want to mention that I am not being paid to talk about any of this. This is what I genuinely prefer to use and I'm going to tell you all the ins and outs of it today. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today I want to talk about my navigation setup. And while having an asset like this is very invaluable, when we first started out, we were using maps and compasses, books, our phones. There's lots of ways to get out and navigate when you are out exploring. But if you're going to be doing this a lot, like I do, having a dedicated system where you can record, track, mark waypoints, make sure you don't get lost is extremely invaluable and I have gone through a few different systems over the year but this is what I keep coming back to so what I want to talk about today is what I'm using what apps I'm using more than one and how is this all mounted that it stays nice and firm when I'm out on the hard trails now let's start off with the actual hardware system itself I am using an iPad mini and this is the fifth generation, so I believe that this is the newest one out there, but I've used a few over the years. The important thing about using an iPad mini is it needs to have cellular capability. So they have a Wi-Fi version and they have a Wi-Fi and cellular version. You don't necessarily need to have the cellular plan, but what that, that specific model does for you is it gives you GPS. And so the Wi-Fi one does not have a built-in GPS, to the best of my knowledge. So that's why I get this one. I don't currently have the cell phone plan on this, but I do link it with my phone so I can get updates on here. I can download stuff if I need to. It works really well. I think having that cellular plan, if it's within your budget, makes a lot of sense. Honestly, I've done it in the past and it's a little more seamless. Getting it to pair up with your phone sometimes can be a little finicky, but it does work really well. I like this because it's thin, it's lightweight, it's easy to charge. And in fact, the charger that I'm using charges both my phone and the iPad so I can switch back and forth, which is really, really perfect for me. Okay, I'm gonna talk about what apps I'm using here in a second, but let's talk about how this is all mounted. All right, the first thing we'll talk about here is what the iPad is mounted to. And this is a Ram Easy Roller, I think is what it's called. And I actually have three of these. And the reason I have three is because once you get this kind of like where you want it, you don't really want to move it around. And so I find that in my Jeep Wrangler JL392 that it fits perfectly on this little side mount because you have two options to mount this ball. And it fits perfectly right above the radio. And I've got still some visibility. I can plug it in on this side. But in the JK, I actually have this flipped around and it's over a little more center. And in the van, it's completely different as well. And so instead of just taking this out and remembering how I was supposed to move it, these aren't very expensive. And I just ordered three of these and they're just permanently mounted. So all I have to do is just pull my iPad in and out, which is really easy to do, which I also like. It holds the iPad very, very securely and it's easy to pull it in and out and it just works really well and you have a lot of options here about how you can mount this. Again, if you wanted it to sit up higher, you can mount it on this lower one and raise it up here, shift it around, it's really nice. Now I have on the back here is a Ram one inch ball and that ball is attached to a 67 Designs one inch ball receiver head. I'm not sure what this is called, but this is specifically to use with the 67 Designs arm to mount to a one inch ball. Typically 67 Designs uses a 20 millimeter ball and that's what's on the other end of this arm. What I like about the 67 Designs arm is you have a lot of flexibility because you can rotate this in 
any different direction you want, but plus they sell different sizes of arms. So if you want this shorter, if you want this to st stick out further, you have those options. One thing to think about though, is if you go with a longer arm, you might start getting a little vibration. Honestly though, with the iPad and this setup, it's so lightweight that it just doesn't vibrate. I have used some systems recently that were thicker, that were heavier, and no matter how hard I tighten them down, it would still shake on the trail. And so I really like how durable this is because when you're going down a nice bumpy washboard road for many miles and you're trying to see your navigation, it's sitting there shaking, it can be really annoying. And so this is rock solid in here and I really like that. And I think it's a tribute because the, the iPad mini doesn't weigh very much. Now, what is the 67 Designs arm mounted to. So I mentioned that's a 20 millimeter ball and that is on my Vector E-Dock Contour mounting system that's on here. Now I have a very similar one in the JK, but it's more of a bar style. And these just, you can see I've got all kinds of things mounted on here, but allows you a lot of versatility on where you wanna put this. Where I put it may not be where somebody else wants to put it. Maybe you wanna have it where your passenger has more easy access to the navigation, or you wanna have it closer to you because you don't want your phone over here. You can really move this around anywhere you want, which I really like. So this setup for me has been working for a long time. It works really well, but now let's talk about the apps that I'm using, because that's the question I know folks really want to know. Now let's talk about the navigation apps that I'm using, and I have a few here that I kind of reference. The primary one that I use is Gaia GPS. I've been using Gaia GPS for years. In fact, if you look here, I have so many tracks, so many waypoints, so many things that I've uploaded and recorded, and I just have so much information in here it makes it hard for me to transition to something else, although I have tried several else, and we'll talk about that here in a second. What I really like about Gaia is it's easy to record, it's easy to upload GPX files, which are navigation files, so you can get those in many different places, and it's really intuitive to just add waypoints and add information about it. I really have just I guess it's a comfort thing. I'm really comfortable with Gaia because I've used it for so long. And that's important, is if you're just starting out, I would encourage you to try several different navigation apps and see what one fits for you. Because just because I use Gaia doesn't mean that that's what's gonna work for you. But I really like it. Now it has a lot of map overlays. And I honestly don't use very many of them. I use the overland map overlay. I use the forest fire one, which has always been helpful. The snow depth one is a really great one, especially when you're out in the winter. And then I like the Nat Geo and the history one. Sometimes those give you some good information. But all in all, Gaia is great. It does sync between my phone and my computer, but most apps nowadays will do that anyway. I did have some challenges a while back with it not syncing properly. And after about two weeks of talking to customer service, they've got it all sorted and it's been fine probably for the last, I don't know, year and a half or so. But Gaia is my primary navigation tool. However, I also have trailsoffroad.com, their app on here. And what I really like about that is, while this is not a comprehensive list of trails over the US. These are trails that have been explored and documented and you can upload the files from those trails, the GPX files, directly from Trails Off-Road to Gaia. It's seamless. You just click one button and it automatically takes that file and then when you're on Gaia, it's already there with all of their waypoints. The information is perfect. It's really good. But their app in general just works great. You can download stuff for offline use, which is great. You need to do that in Gaia as well. If you're gonna to go to an area where you don't have any service, you need to download that map for offline use, which is really easy to use, but make sure you do that because if you don't, uh, you could end up without signal. Uh, but Trails Off-Road does that as well, and it will navigate you through the trail with all the waypoint markers. It's a really good resource. I've been using their stuff for years, and when they came out with an app, I was quick to download it because I really like uh, the work they do.
Now, the other one I have on here is, is a very popular one. A lot of folks out there uh, use Onyx Off-Road. And apparently I'm not logged in at the moment, so I will have to just show you some screenshots of what that looks like. But Onyx Off-Road has some really good assets. Again, it syncs between your phone and your computer. You can plan routes, you can upload GPX files, a lot of the stuff that Gaia has. But it also has really good information about trails. Uh, sometimes they're very detailed, sometimes it's just a little bit of information. I will say Gaia is not as powerful a tool if you want to find information about trails or you're looking up trails, sometimes it can be a little more difficult. Onyx Off-Road does a better job. It's definitely a little more comprehensive and I do like that about it. I also like that it has good information about public lands and private lands. It basically tells you very clearly whose land ownership you are on. And that is a very valuable tool. Gaia has it as well, but I think Onyx just does it a little bit better. Now, all three of these apps do charge a fee to use. I think they all might have trial versions and I encourage you to give that those a try. But I do pay for all three, just because as often as I'm out, as much exploring as I do, I want to have as much information as I possibly can. But you don't need to have all three. Just figure out which one works best for you and use that. All right, now you're going to see on here that I have the Garmin Tread app. And actually, it's not... I've never used it on the iPad. I've only used it on the phone, but it just automatically synced uh, with my iPad. The reason that I have that on there is because I have the big 10 inch Garmin Tread navigation system. It's its own standalone big tablet that's got a built-in SOS Garmin inReach, and it is a dedicated satellite navigation system that has all the maps in there and a lot of information. It's great. It's great when you don't know where you're going to be going uh, and you haven't pre-downloaded maps in any of these apps, which you need to do if you're going to be out of cell service. With that one, you don't need to do that. You're going to have connectivity as long as you got visibility of the sky and you can see some satellites, you're going to have connectivity on that. For me though, it was just a little too big. It was a little too bulky. And it didn't allow me the opportunity to use some of the other things that I like to have in an iPad. I mean, look, an iPad just does a lot of other stuff besides navigation. And so that's why I've kind of just gone back to this. I gave that Garmin Tread a good go. It's a great system. And I think a lot of folks would love it. Uh, for me, I just, I guess it's a comfort thing. I'm just comfortable with using the iPad. And I already have so much information in Gaia to take all that information, all those tracks, all those waypoints, and transfer them over to Onyx or transfer them over to Garmin would be a massive amount of work. And so for me, I'm kind of stuck because I have so much information there, but I have tried others and I will continue to try other navigation software in the future. But right now, Gaia is, uh, is my go-to navigation system. Now, you'll also see that I have Google Maps on here. And I think that's one that folks kind of overlook. Having Google Maps is a great asset for finding roads and sometimes some good forest roads or more well-known trails. The important thing to do is make sure you download the area that you're going to be in for offline use. And Google Maps has that feature. Most folks don't know about that, but if you click on Google Maps, offline download, you can download whatever area you're going to and at least have some road navigation there, which can be very helpful. And then also weather guys, you got to have your weather app on here because weather is one of those things that you just never know uh, when it's going to have to detract you from your current mission and you might have to go somewhere else. So even though it's not a navigation app, knowing your weather is extremely, extremely valuable. Now, there are still other apps out there. There's other software. There's other dedicated systems that I know a lot of people like using. And I hope that there's new ones that come out that I will give a try in the future. But I want to mention that there is no substitute for knowing how to use a map and a compass. And you really shouldn't hit the trails without having those assets and knowing how to use them. If you've never navigated using a map and compass, you should just give it a try because it's a great skill to have. Now, hopefully I have answered what I'm using, how it's mounted, but if you have more questions, let me know down in the comments. And if you have a system or an app that you prefer, 
let me know down below. I'd love to check it out, or maybe some other folks would like to hear about it. And if you are interested in knowing how I find the trails that I explore, I will leave a link to that video down below. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed hearing this and talking about this. Thanks for hanging out with me. Until next time, safe travels.